So, I learned something this week that I thought I'd just share with you guys because it's quite interesting. You know, after a good night's sleep, I woke up with a very stiff and very hurt, hurtful uh, neck and uh, normally I'd, uh, you know, just lose the pain within a day or so, but this time it took four days and the last of those uh, nights I didn't sleep at all because my neck was hurting so bad. So obviously I took uh, the trip up to the uh, hospital to check out what the fuck this was. And the nurses there, they really, really, they knew their thing very well and they immediately concluded this was just something they called a hold in Danish. And now a hold is, uh, you know, when, when you have uh, a newborn toddler, a newborn baby, you always are supposed to uh, support the baby's head because uh, its neck is not uh, strong enough to hold the weight of its head yet. And obviously I'm not a baby, so my neck is actually fully capable of holding the weight of my head even if it's unsupported by a pillow or an arm during the night. But okay, the hold that the, these nurses were talking about, it's basically when you get some nerve cells in a squeeze, you know, your, your neck is just full of wiring and wet wear and, uh, you know, cables or uh, arteries for blood vessels and oxygen from your lungs and nerve cells, right? So if you get some kind of um, imbalance in your neck, you may actually put these nerve cells in a squeeze and then one nerve cell will just alert the other neighboring nerve cells and and go like screaming at the top of their lungs like uh, danger danger it's a dangerous situation here you know this is really really dangerous and the other nerve cells will go oh my god my neighbor is saying this is really really dangerous it's a dangerous situation here and just alert all the nerve cells all around the neck right and then uh, even if the the first uh, nerve cell might have a point maybe there was some kind of situation that might just be a bit dangerous but probably not just uh, you know it got the impression this was a squeeze right so all the nerve cells will basically go on alarmism hyper overdrive and just alarm the whole top of my body more or less <laughs> and uh, sort of slowly even uh, informing my brain that ah this might actually be a dangerous situation you better go to the hospital right so and the 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 cure the solution for all of this was basically just to relax you know get some uh, painkillers and just relax those uh, overexcited nerve cells so I'm telling this story because there's been a similar event going on this summer and autumn uh, in the uh, abrupt climate change community online and globally where you've got these alarmists telling each other that this is really really dangerous uh, we may die immediately or next week or next month and I'm sad to say that too many people in that community are just listening to, to other alarmists who are going crazy about some tiny tiny uh, 
development or change in the real world, or maybe not even in the real world. It's just they're going in full alarmist mode, and they're just too many people are just listening to other high span, uh, high strung uh, alarmists without actually checking the source, actually going to see the data, checking if uh, a trend line is up or down, for instance. And they're just alerting each other and then the whole organism or the whole organization or the whole movement is just going into total alarmism hyper overdrive for no reason. So uh, maybe it's time to just relax a bit, get some good night's sleep and yeah, why not make it a habit to check the data yourself. You know, can't hurt. Okay, thank you for listening. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Welcome back to Clueless FM, Homo Saps. Tonight we'll look at volume, and specifically Arctic sea ice volume. So here you have the uh, the graph for a 365 day average volume coming up here and you also have the new year coming up December 31st and when you have the 365 day average on December 31st you have the average volume for 2017 right so that's about here and um, Currently, it looks like 12.9 thousand cubic kilometers on the 31st. Uh, so, the 2017 volume will be, I would guess, somewhere from 12.8 to 12.9, maybe more than 12.95, so it will be rounded up to 13 thousand, but definitely looks like lower than 13,000 cubic kilometers for the year and um, so you see the blue one here is 2017 and the green one is also 2017 how can that be well you know in two or three weeks we will be in 2018 so the blue will be 2018 and then the only competitor in this view will be the green graph which will be last year so 2017 will be last year in three weeks okay no mystery there but it's like a bit lonely you know 2017 competing against 2017 why are there no other years in this plot the reason is simple no other year has ever been below 13 you know for the 365 day average. So this is a record low, right? 2017 is lower than any other year in satellite history since 1979. And you know, this is like totally unreported, no Arctic report card or no uh, Mainstream media article has ever touched the fact that 2017 is lowest on record. So, any 10 year old who has been allowed to go to school can add up 365 days of volume and divide it by 365, right? And I, any grown up scientist or journalist in the world can just add these numbers in a spreadsheet in a tick but didn't it's amazing in it oh no one figured this one out yet or wouldn't or couldn't publish but it just gets better and better reminiscent of the cold war maybe we've entered the warm war Warm war. Under no circumstances must press, politicians or people 
know what goes on in the high north. True north must be guarded as the most secret of secrets, never to be shared with our enemy. So we're the enemy, we can't know this. Merry Christmas! Hey, hello. Hello there. <laughs> so. How's it going? Tonight looks like it is uh, uh, Murphy's law. It's really nice. Yeah, someone is calling. I guess that's you. Oh my god. Yes, but I'm, I'm already calling. I know. So you just have to listen to this uh, thing going on. Or maybe it gives up. I guess. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any plans for the sol winter solstice? The winter solstice, yes. Uh, only two days left. Three days. Yeah. Thursday, that's great, really. Yeah. So that's. Um... It will be rain and lots of rain and, uh, and not a single um, snowflake anywhere. Okay, I think uh, up here is going, going to be snowing and then we're going up to 20 degrees uh, below zero on the 25th, I think. Yeah, something like that. So, four, four guys. And now we have uh, spring. Uh, your spring here again, okay, or will have tomorrow. Yeah. So, and there will be a green and and brown Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hoping to be able to use my skis for the first time uh, here up here. You know, because it's been uh, okay since uh, October. It's been snowing and then raining for five days and then snowing, so it's been like on and off green and white on and off. So. Okay. I like my new background much better, by the way. Yeah. Uh, by my new setting. Very my nice. new studio setting. So where's the samurai sword? Is that over there? There's the samurai sword. Let's see. <laughs> Here is my sunflower sword. Uh huh. I thought it was on the wall behind you there, no. by the window or something. It's not. Yeah. Uh, not on the wall, but on the, um, the shelf. Okay. Mm. It's always good to have a sword in case of the trolls interfering with the video call, you know. Oh yes, yeah. I know exactly where it is. I know if someone come and uh, come to get me. Huh? I know exactly where it is. That's good. And uh, there are uh, the threats keep up, really. Yeah. They don't. Uh, uh, they are not there all the time, but they they uh, return periodically or uh, not so periodically. So, what kind of trouble have you been gotten gotten yourself into lately? Hmm? What kind of trouble have you been uh, provoking lately? Uh, stop NATO, right. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, a lot, a lot of stuff. So, you mean there are people? Uh, are there people who don't because, want NATO to be stopped? Oh, yes, there are lots of people that don't want NATO to be stopped, that's for sure. Okay. Mm. Uh, we were kept out all of the local new, uh, newspapers uh, during our protest yeah. or, sup on, or support demonstration hmm. uh, last week. Hmm. Uh, but we got lots of pictures and everything. 
That's great. Mm. Uh, we were the only uh, protest outside Oslo. All right. I think. Was that for the but, Peace uh, Prize or something? Pardon? Was that uh, connected with the Peace Prize or something in Oslo? Uh, yes, I can. Mm. Uh, were, it was a support demonstration for ICANN yeah. and a protest against NATO. Yeah, and nuclear weapons, oh, of course. And, and nuclear arms. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was just not NATO, but lots of other uh, peace organizations as well. Yeah. The, uh, the kind of... Um, they're trying to make uh, Norwegian peace, uh, peace uh, protests Rise like a phoenix from the ashes. Oh, that's a good. That's a big task. Because it's a bit lot of uh, it's a lot lot of pretend peace organizations, isn't it? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, but there are. Uh, it's just 15, 14 years since the last major demonstrations, so yeah. it shouldn't be a problem. No. But mm. it is so far. But we are working on it. Yeah. Because the last time I checked, uh, you know, peace organizations in Norway wanted to bomb Libya and stuff, you know. So. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that is funny, uh, um, but I'm not laughing. Oh, it's it's yeah, tragic, but uh, you know the irony uh, of the. Yes. It's, it's yeah, like you know, it's like the it's like the Green Party wanting to pump oil and gas for like 15 more years, you know, in Norway. Uh, the Green Party took part in the demonstration, by the way. All right. Uh, the support demonstration for um, against uh, the protest against nuclear arms and uh, uh, support demonstration for ICANN. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was really funny to see the Norwegian Prime Minister not uh, applauding during their speech. Okay. During the Icon speech, during the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony. Yeah. How oh, you it mean was the, very uh, notable? You mean the new the new prime minister, not uh, Jens Stoltenberg, but uh... <laughs> definitely the new okay. the, the new old now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right wing government. Stoltenberg, Stoltenberg he uh, once again embraced. Uh, Donald. Oh, Donald, yeah. yeah. Donald Duck. Mm. So, anything else? Yeah, not really. I've been in exile for 10 days. Uh, I've had, had a great time writing and such. And uh, harassed people on Twitter. Excellent. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's um, it's a it's a dynamic uh, cycle, right? Hmm. Uh, the exile, the uh, the uh, visiting town, and then back to writing and uh, Twitter and uh, social media works the same way. I have a balance, balancing. Yeah. Uh, all the time. So you retreat to uh, you retreat to solitude and then you go on social media. <laughs> absolutely. It's also a bit of I'm irony. A, I'm, a, I'm not really in solitude. Uh, no. When I'm uh, in exile either. No. Anymore. That was before uh, the internet and before Twitter and everything. Um, yeah, the irony, uh, it's another ironic uh, thing, I guess. When I'm uh, going for solitude, I get less solitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have more solitude when I sit uh, at the coffee shop. Really. Absolutely. And uh, yes, uh, I, I tend to, I, I sometimes get visitors. Uh, there as well, but mm, that's just as well as I, that I don't because I, I write more when I'm sitting there alone. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. Take more notes. Hmm. It's uh, yeah, uh, uh, and the um, everything. Yeah, it's some, sometimes it's good to just go to a cafe because you don't have internet on the cafe, you know, like here in Greenland. Oh no, yeah. I, I uh, deliberately uh, don't bring any uh, social media communication device yeah. when I go to town. Really. I, I have no, um, in, I have no interest nor uh, desire really. Hmm. To, be on social media all the time. I see. Uh, I look at the people sitting there with the cell phones. Mm. Uh, four people around the table, yeah. and they sit. Uh, uh, all the all four of them sit mm. and uh, glance stare at the cell phones yeah. behind their uh, between their um, knees. Yeah, you know here and in here. Uh, you know, here in Greenland, uh, on, here in Greenland, on the pubs, you know, uh, they they have a poster uh, on the wall in the pub with a Wi-Fi symbol, uh, and then it says, uh, "Sorry, no Wi-Fi. Talk to your neighbor <laughs> instead." <Yeah. laughs> That's much better. Yeah. Really. It's pretty cool. And they don't actually have. It's, uh, uh, They don't actually have Wi-Fi at all uh, either. It's just you know, it's like you'd have to have it on your phone or something. Yeah. No great loss. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the great spooky uh, mood uh, in my picture. Yeah. Image. Uh, you have some kind of black and white thing going on uh, down there in the, in the uh, thumbnail. Have you done something to, to get that? I just changed positions so I don't, don't get the over my, the light uh, above my head anymore. Because it looks almost so black I and white down there, you know, in the, in the miniature picture. So, yes. I can actually choose who... I thought this was going to be uh, automatic, that the person talking would be have the large picture, but, you know, I don't know. So. No, it isn't. I'm afraid we have, we need to have a special program or something. Yeah, I can just choose to have you in focus all the time, so that I don't have to be featured <laughs> yeah. very much. Right. So. It's great that we can... Uh, hear and see each other uh, on video phone, really. Even if it's still a bad um, quality. Yeah. And it's, it's also a bad replacement for actual social intercourse, I guess. Absolutely. Mm. It's difficult to I buy you... Uh, it's difficult to buy you a beer uh, on this platform, I think. Yes, too bad. You need uh, uh, you need to have top equipment with it to make it uh, look uh, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and a special program. Mm. Uh, and I started uh, visiting Folkelagala um, far more often, actually. Okay. Uh, my, um, my earnings have picked up, so I... So I can uh, go there more, uh, buy more beer, Excellent. which is great. Yeah. And I uh, and I meet uh, a different kind of people uh, there uh, compared to the coffee shops. Really, it's absolutely one of my favorite places in Bergen, uh, for good area. Yeah. Yes, mine as well. Hmm. It's one of the few, uh, it's uh, uh, no wonder it's uh, run by, uh, by beer drinkers, customers, really. Okay, yeah. They, they knew what they wanted, yeah. right? They didn't want uh, the usual run of the mill um, mm. pub. Mm. And it shows. Excellent. They have, um, there is a, 
Great food. Yeah. So to speak. I can, I can sit there for, sit there listening to Credence Clearwater Revival and uh, imagine that I am in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. And without the flooding. Yes. <clears throat> Has Bergen ever been flooded, actually? Oh yes, fairly often. Yeah, but like, you know, for, for days or weeks or something? Not uh, this fall, no. Huh? There was a... Oh yes, there was a flood a month ago, I think. Mm. Mm. We got a massive amount of rain. Yeah. More than we have ever had before, actually. So it fell uh, 30 millimeters in just a few hours, which is enormously, yeah. an enormous uh, amount of rain. I think uh, Nuke is pretty much like Bergen, you know, with the the. Uh, uh, seaside climate, you know, it's pretty mild, lots of, mm -hmm. so almost all, always raining or snowing, you know. So. There's been uh, was a short uh, snow, period of snow here, but it's gone again. No. Yeah. I prefer it that way. I, I stopped uh, enjoying winter when I was 12. <laughs> you had to stop. You had to stop enjoying winter because it was not no longer winter. Right? Yeah, right. six months. Mm. Uh, we had six months of winter. Yeah, thirty years ago. Mm. Now it's hardly winter at all. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, young people, you know, children and youth in Norway. They don't know what skis are anymore. You know, it's like because. They're not used to no, having uh, snow. And not traditionally now. They oh. go to uh, the mountains. They have to go to the mountains to experience it. Yeah. And you know, uh, in, in Oslo, they're building this uh, indoor ski hall. You know, it's crazy. Absolutely. Where everybody it's used to go skiing for eight months of the year in uh, the northern um, slopes of Oslo. They're building this huge. Cutting down all the trees to build an indoor ski hall. So. Yeah, it's just a great sign of the times. No more snow. Yeah. On that. And even for the opening ceremony uh, with the prime minister, you know the 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 fat lady who never nice. never sings. Um, they had to drive in the snow, you know. <laughs> To have a small spot of snow for for laying the the ground stone or something for this ski hall. Uh, so Absolutely, it's completely ridiculous, right? Just looking at those uh, pictures, uh, I got this you know really sad feeling. You know, that, yeah, it's come to this. Uh, denying reality is a favorite uh, pastime yeah. of uh, the civilized. Men and women, men and women. <laughs> One of the most ever favorites, actually. Yeah, which reminds me, um, you told me earlier this year that uh, you'd been uh, one of the first leaders back in the 1980s. You'd been one of the first, very first leaders of uh, the Green Party in Bergen. Yeah, I, I think I was the second, but I'm not sure about that. But, but I do think I was the second in Bergen. Mm. So, uh, in what way was uh, the Green Party ever a different thing back in those days? They were. They weren't different. They were exactly the same like they uh, are today. Totally in denial of what the present truths. But their leader was uh, a bit more radical. You know, I'm talking about yeah, you. You can, you can say that, yes. <laughs> Too radical for those, uh, for those people, to be sure. They went uh, to the newspapers to uh, do a character assassination. Yeah. So, uh, among other things. So, do you want to t tell the story of uh, what you 
what you said uh, when you were a leader of the Green Party, what you said to the um, media back then? I said that uh, we had to be very uh, much braver, uh, much further, and uh, that civilization had to be... Uh, I didn't say exactly that, but uh, in not so many words, I told them that the civil that civilization had to be dismantled. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't say that, I didn't, because it took me five, ten more years before I actually meant it uh, uh, passionately that civilization needed to go. So, um, so but you were, you were talking that. about the oil industry or something, you know, in specific terms back then? Mm. I, I, I guess I thought about it uh, a bit, but I didn't really. I, I wasn't the one then, so I didn't really call for an the ending of the oil industry. I wasn't that uh, progressive, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's uh, irony or uh, ridiculous again. I wasn't, uh, I was radical at the, at the time, but compared to how I am now, I, I was just a uh, small time radical, really. Mm. So I didn't, uh, I didn't go far uh, in my eyes, but uh, the reaction still turned out to be massive. <laughs> so you say, you're saying that people who chose you to be their leader of the Green Party that didn't agree that we needed to uh, start dismantling this form of society? Uh, that, uh, I didn't hide my opinions at mm. all, so uh, I guess they wasn't uh, they weren't paying attention uh, when I was elected. I guess. But you called for you called for some sort of press conference or something to 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 say these things to the TV to NRK TV. Is that right? Uh, I was interviewed. I. Um, during an election program, I was, uh, uh, they, um, I was interviewed uh, during the election. Yeah. Uh, I called, I tried to uh, enlist the media as usual, but failed. Really. Yeah. The media uh, uh, was, the established media was just not interested in what I had to say. Uh, Except when, uh, uh, after uh, three the three members uh, went to the press and told uh, told uh, the press that uh, I had gone way too far or something, then they were very interested. But have you gone way too far? Uh, did you break any sort of principles in the party regulations, or you know? Oh no, uh, I did. I most certainly did. Uh, I even uh, had. Um, I did have a radical uh, program, local program, of course, hmm. uh, in four parts, where we uh, laid out the groundwork for the dismantling of civilization. Excellent. Uh, once again. It was. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't uh, the dismantling, uh, but the um, result would have been yeah. the same. Really. Yeah. Uh, I remember um, I wrote um, for the um, magazine, student magazine, uh, uh, Nemesis, in 1996. Yeah. That was the first time I publicly went out and said that. Um, that this uh, civilization had to be uh, had to go. Yeah, uh, I, I was uh, even looking forward to that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they didn't uh, they didn't manage to um, to um, uh, stop my uh, stop my um, stop me from speaking out. I was just more eager. Yeah. Uh, speak out uh, after uh, that, uh, but I was I was completely exhausted. It wasn't exactly pleasant. 
mm. when it uh, took place. I, I, I returned to Europe and to London uh, totally exhausted. Yeah. And I felt like I was um, uh, born again, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, there were, there were, there were uh, those weeks in August 1991, mm. they were uh, extremely uh, horrible. Uh, to be kind. Mm. Mm. The pressure was up all the time, and uh, and there was there were, I had uh, I really had no defenders either. No. Uh, with the pirate party uh, this spring, it was different. Uh, I wasn't alone then, but I was alone yeah. uh, uh, um, in nineteen ninety one. That's often the way it is, you know, when you're a dissident and you are slightly ahead of your time, you know, with your thinking. Yes, and I, I'm still ahead of my time, really. Yeah. Uh, society and the Green Party and everyone, really, is uh, they haven't learned anything. That's uh, the sad, the sad truth. Yeah, how how are they? You know, how are they even going to be able to learn? You know, they just uh, silence people and shut people out. So it's like totally impossible for them to learn anything. Yeah, they were very good at that uh, <laughs> in 1991 as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's for sure. Uh, and, uh, all the new information they have uh, received since then. And then, uh, but they haven't changed at all. They haven't set the first, set the goals. Um, uh, they haven't changed their goals, their um, objectives at all. I think uh, yeah. I think the way the Green Party, even the Green Party Youth Division, and uh, the way they still want to pump oil and gas in Norway and the North Sea for 15 more years is a proof of what you're saying there you know it's like yeah of course we need we, we're gonna have some you know more buses and some electric cars and stuff obviously but you know we still need to pump, pump oil and gas and Norway has the cleanest oil industry in the world and it's like you know <laughs> even in the green party people are going on with crap like that you know it's like and even the youth yeah. even the young people within the party are like Oh, we're so radical. We only want to pump oil for 15 more years, while the grown-ups want to pump oil for 20 more years. You know, it's like they really yes, deny us of climate is, change. You know, they don't believe in I global that warming. That's something to be proud of, and it is, of course. Right. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you and I uh, had a suggestion for the... Um, for the Green Party National Congress uh, this spring uh, to change one of the policy points in the program from, um, I think it was originally it said that Norway should seize its oil and gas, um, um, you know, activity in, in 20 years from now. And uh, yours and my suggestion was to change the word years to weeks to, 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 to seize oil, all oil and gas activity in 20 weeks. <laughs> Absolutely, a, a, more, a lot more sensible uh, suggestion. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. To see it mildly, but uh, it isn't just about the oil either, it's about everything. Yeah. So, you have to... Uh, we, uh, people are growing, grown up in a society uh, which is uh, totally lacking uh, touch with reality. So um, For real. Yeah, it has to be uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah, really. It isn't strange that people are the way they are. But it's, it's still frustrating, of course, but uh, it isn't strange. Yeah. Uh, as I said before, uh, the anti-authoritarian people, they are better equipped to, to break out 
mm. to break free from the brainwashing and such. I think maybe, uh, so, you know, some of the pain that the, you and I uh, are experiencing because we've been like warning about this thing is real, you know, it's not a hoax, global, global warming is not a hoax. It can somehow be compared to, uh, you know, the Semmelweis, this, um, this uh, Austrian doctor or Swiss doctor or something. Uh, he was the, the guy who figured out that less mothers and, and newborn babies would uh, would die during uh, during giving birth um, if the doctors actually washed their hands, you know. So he found yeah. the, he didn't actually know about you know the exact germs and stuff that would uh, kill uh, mothers giving birth because the doctors had been operating on dead corpses and stuff before they came into the <laughs> the the clinic. Um, uh, but he he just uh, he did some experiments with, with his uh, students and said that everybody has to wash their hands, and then the the death rate in the um, the birth clinic went went down you know almost immediately, but every time the the uh, professional doctors who were not his students who and who didn't wash their hands came in and, and uh, helped um, mothers give birth, uh, they kept dying. The mothers and the, and the kids uh, at the same rate as before, but of course, you know, all the doctors just hated him. Uh, what, who is this guy with his new fancy theory? You know, and uh, why should we listen to him? And they more or less, you know, ostracized him, and he actually died of uh, guard violence uh, and some guards who 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 who, who uh, killed him in. Um, while restraining him at some kind of mental hospital, so he he would yeah he, he had to live for like ten years after he discovered that people should doctors should wash their hands, he had to live for ten years and just see the doctors not adopting his uh, idea of you know cleaning your hands before yeah, you. I, I heard I heard about them. It's a typical uh, uh, case of denial. Yeah. So he he knew sort of why these people were dying, uh, but he and he had already said you should stop, you should stop doing that without washing your hands, uh, but nobody listened. You know, it's like he was right all along, but nobody would uh, listen to it because it changed their old ways, right? So. Yes, it's uh, quite terrible. That's what's it. Hmm. But uh, it's far worse than that, really, too, because the, there isn't just one uh, area, right? It's in all areas. Yeah. So uh, the, cli the climate change denial, uh, which is uh, basically everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it isn't just Trump. It's uh, various stages of denial. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, even... Those uh, preaching uh, the glory of uh, climate change are, are just as um, much in denial as Trump was, <laughs> which is really strange. Yeah, I think that's the, yeah. almost almost the worst thing that the you know the, the Green Party you were talking about. Even they want to, you know to keep uh, having this carbon energy industry going. Uh, even they want. To people to drive you know individual cars and and it's like if only you know you could dream but you know if, if only the actual environmentalists they're green you know it would be a, a huge uh, step forward oh yes if the environmentalists actually behaved like environmentalists hmm. it would be a huge step forward the professed environmentalists. Yeah, so uh, so called. Yeah. Like, so called, yes. Yeah. So um, that would be uh, great mm. because uh, there will always been uh, just a few uh, changing the world either yeah. way. Uh, so. 
uh, but we are stumbling headlong into uh, uh, the quality disaster is very uh, not uh, strong enough. The abyss. Uh, mm -hmm. Ragnarok is uh, a good term. <laughs> really. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's the ultimate uh, disaster, right? Yeah, it's quite that's scary much, actually uh, because you have the, you know, uh, you know the serpent uh, Midgash Argon from Ragnarok. Yes. Yeah. I've been uh, for a couple of years. I've been peddling this uh, really dark image um, painted by some some Swedish artist of the the serpent um, in some northern location. Looks a bit like Norway or Greenland. And the serpent is coming, you know, in from the ocean, in from the fjord, and rising up with his head and sort of attacking, preparing to attack uh, a little. Uh, Fisher Village, you know. So it's like yeah. I was spelling that around the the internet for a couple of years, and then this June, I think, there was a a permafrost failure in Greenland, um, north of Ilulissat, and uh, the whole uh, mountainside fell out into the fjord and created a great, a huge sixty meter high uh, tsunami or something, um, killing people in two. Two different villages in uh, by the fjord in Greenland. It was like, um, yeah, uh, the old myths about uh, disaster and uh, Ragnarok is uh, are coming are coming true. Just uh, coming true, true. Yes, they are uh, clearly prophetic. That's for sure. Yeah. And it's like okay, uh, when this when this happens, like in in one. One area in Greenland or in the Arctic is like you just know that this permafrost is melting all over the Arctic, you know. So it's like it's not going to stop there. It's just going to uh, oh, no. expand. Uh, and the South Pole, uh, Antarctica, is just uh, exactly the same actually. Mm. And uh, the ice, um, Antarctica has ninety percent of all ice. On Earth, so that's um, really it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. And and vice the vast um, Antarctic ice sheet can, uh, if that breaks free from the mainland, it will be six uh, meters. Yeah. In just a few uh, weeks. And Greenland. Days, and, and Greenland is like seven meters or something. Is it? It's it's just about the same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, between five and seven uh, meters. Yeah. Both both places. Mm. Uh, the the vice and uh, Greenland ice is um, has the same amount of uh, mass. Yeah, yeah. So and snow. Uh, snow ice, and snow mass. And uh, so uh, twelve meters um, approximately. Uh, when both go, and then we have uh, east, more east Antarctic. When, uh, the yeah. the ice goes. So, uh, what do you think about the timing uh, of a Greenland ice sheet uh, melting uh, compared to the Western Antarctic? Mm, yeah, both uh, they can happen uh, simultaneously. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, or within a few years of each other, which will have the same uh, um, effect. Uh, effect, yes, absolutely. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. Um, there are also some uh, uh, quite interesting, um, you know, tele connections. Tele means uh, you know, far away, you know. Uh, so tele connections between. Uh, sea level because of ice melting in north can uh, immediately um, influence uh, increased melt in the south because you know if you raise the sea level because of uh, northern melt the whole uh, global ocean is increased and then you get further into the uh, uh, fjords and valleys uh, under the ice in the in antarctica so it's like 
Absolutely. We've seen uh, scientists have seen in in the uh, paleo um, records, uh, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago, that it's been a seesaw kind of uh, pattern where the north is influencing the south and and the other way. Yeah. Mm. It uh, makes sense, of course. Uh, the uh, the the effect on the Antarctica ice is immense already. It's um, I mean, the ice is basically gone several places. Yeah. Uh, that cat uh, that survived the hundred years would have no uh, problem. That cat family that survived in hundred years would have no trouble at all surviving. Uh, no. There was a cat family surviving in Antarctica? With Amundsen, yes. He came with Amundsen. Well, she came with Amundsen and, was, uh, and had uh, kids. So Amundsen uh, brought a cat to the South Pole? For real? Yes, with, with a ship, I imagine. Uh, the cat uh, wasn't uh, part of the expedition inland, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, she was on the ship. Yeah. But she wasn't on the ship when they left. Okay. And uh, they were found, uh, her, her um, ascendants. Yeah. Um, were found uh, in the 90s, I think. Okay. <laughs> so had they been eating penguins or something? Mm, yeah, nobody knows really. But huh? they, uh, but uh, there were quite a few of them. So. Yeah, because I don't think you have any mice uh, in green in um, Antarctica. No, my dear, but the man, it's 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 so ridiculous when when um, Norwegian uh, when um, so-called animal friends claim that cats need to be neutered, cats <laughs> like yeah. uh, because they can't survive in nature. Yeah. It's completely. But uh, I guess Amundsen and and uh, you know everyone was lucky uh, that that the cats in Antarctica didn't do uh, as uh, some animals in Australia, you know, taking over the island and killing every every local species. So it's no, a they, uh, they weren't that uh, adaptable, I guess. It's a good thing that the cats in Antarctica didn't uh, kill off all the penguins. <laughs> As I said, they weren't that adaptable. Mm. Uh, a cat is, uh, if it had been a panther, perhaps, or yeah. a tiger. Or a snow leopard, perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. A white tiger. Yeah. I think you had white lions as well, you know, uh, in, in Alaska, uh, 20,000 years ago. Yes, uh, and white tigers uh, used to exist in Asia, yeah. but they don't anymore. Hmm. In, the, in the Asian lands markets. Yeah. We, we are destroying life on Earth wholesale. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny. I am. Um, I'm about to write um, a new suggestion for a new uh, paragraph in uh, the Pirate Party's uh, program. Yeah. Uh, about surveillance. Uh, that we. Uh, um, I don't think it will be uh, adapted. It won't get enough votes, but I will try anyway. But it's quite funny, really. Uh, um, I would say we, uh, um, quote unquote, uh, the Pirate Party wishes to have a great uh, major limitation on surveillance. Mm. Uh, there should be few or no exceptions, except on uh, the surveillance uh, ward, um, the heart ward. Uh, on the um, uh, hospitals and such. Yeah. And since we have, uh, since surveillance is illegal, then I started thinking, 
and since uh, surveillance is legal, uh, we have to, uh, of course, have to uh, close down, um, you know, the, uh, the clandestine services and such. Yeah. And since we close down the clandestine service, we have to close down uh, uh, NATO. Terminate right. or uh, a membership in NATO and so on. Yeah. So everything is connected, right? So, <laughs> so you, you found the you found the secret uh, way to just uh, dismantle NATO altogether, you know, because of some Absolutely. Norwegian law. All right. Well. Uh, um, you know the uh, the domino effect, right? Yeah. One domino falls, and all of them falls. Yeah. Fall. Well, call me call me a skeptic. That's a, <laughs> yeah, that's a genius uh, approach, really. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a bit yeah. like it's a bit like you know you have the international court in Hague in the Netherlands, right? Uh, and they can, you know, potentially they can arrest uh, a American general for war crimes or whatever. Uh, so the the obvious um, reaction uh, in America after the uh, international court was set up in the Hague was to create the the Hague Invasion Act, which is an American law, an American act that um, makes it uh, legal. For American soldiers to just invade the city of Hague in in the Netherlands <laughs> in case uh, of any Americans being uh, being dra I dragged into the court. I'm not surprised. <laughs> the Hague Invasion Act. You can just you know Google it. So uh, yes. it's like it's the same thing with with this. If if you're a little tiny tiny pirate party in in Norway finds a way to close down the secret services and and by extension NATO uh, they will simple simply you know just bomb Bergen again like they did in in Telewag, uh, yeah. um and or and or invade Norway it's like you know problem solved yeah. big guys all the British though but the British, uh, mm. but the British uh... Uh, the, both uh, the Americans and uh, the British and the French are basically almost, uh, they compete about uh, invading yeah. all the countries in the world. Uh, it's just four, there are just four countries where Britain hasn't invited, all right. among them Sweden. All right. For, uh, Britain have invited, has invaded the Norway. I think but even even Sweden is debatable because you know you have the um, the so-called Russian uh, submarine crisis in the 1980s, and that was actually NATO and Western submarines uh, pretending to be an invading force from from Russia, you know, for propaganda value. Oh, yes, it's a funny point anyway. It's a moot point anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It's interesting the thing that happened in Sweden because you know today it's uh, well documented, but uh, back in the day in the 1980s you had Olof Palme and the um, Swedish Social Democratic Party, which was not socialists but you know like yeah uh, left of center or something, and so they they were running the government, uh, but the military and the navy in Sweden they were cooperating with these. Uh, NATO military, uh, you know, submarine, uh, fake Russian invasion people, right? So it was kind of a war in Swedish waters, in Swedish territory, between the Swedish Navy and the Swedish government, which is Absolutely. pretty extreme, I think. Palma uh, was, uh, was a thorn in the side of the United States and NATO, no doubt. Tell me about uh, it. it was, uh, uh, it was quite a character. Yeah. Of course, it's no, it's no, it's no hero. It's not not really a hero to guys like you and me because he was, you know, vigorously in favor of uh, nuclear industry and lots of stuff like all the people from his generation were. So it was in in was no way. At the polar socialist, right? Yeah, he was no, he was no environmentalist at all. You know, 
So. No, not at all. Mm. But he was very anti-American, and that was why he was shot. Yeah, there's many theories about that, but uh, obviously the strongest power in the world could have a hand in it, I guess. It could have been the South Africans, of course, he was very critical, uh, but uh, they did why should they just care about him? Hmm. It's, but uh, Palmer was against the Vietnam War, very vocal about it, and a lot of other stuff too. I think it maybe was the uh, he wanted to basically throw the Americans out of Scandinavia, you know, to get uh, Denmark and Norway along to have uh, the Nordic countries as a nuclear-free zone and uh, without any basis. Yeah. Uh, not very popular that's, in that's Washington. One of the one of the things we are looking into, by the way, the new Norwegian peace, uh, peace uh, organization, uh, or the peace movement. Yeah? <laughs> oh yes, uh, a Norwegian uh, uh, Scandinavian uh, military alliance, definitely. Yeah. We, we, have to, we have to sell something uh, to people, right? I would prefer we didn't have military at all. Hmm. But, um, but it would be a, a good tactic to, to hold that up as an alternative. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a better solution to have a common Nordic defense uh, deal than uh, being, you know, trapped between, between Russia and China and America on the other side. And England, of course. England is oh, the yeah. most aggressive country in, in our region. But. And it wouldn't necessarily just be a uh, Scandinavia either. Uh, they could just as uh, if NATO first breaks up, we could have a true European, or at least northern European, yeah. defense cooperation. Hmm. Yeah, together with uh, St. Petersburg and uh, you know the Baltics and yeah. and Germany. Hmm. Which isn't really uh, so far fetched, but the, uh, and uh, Germany didn't really don't doesn't really have a military uh, much. No, but they still have fifty thousand uh, U.S. occupying soldiers on their land, right? In Germany. Absolutely. So the Second World War never ended in in Germany, actually. I think yeah, almost all the, the wars that America are in, involved in now, they have they use uh, Rammstein Air Base in Germany as their you know landing base, launching base. Oh, yes, they do that. Do that uh, almost. Um, it's a very important base, just like uh, Aglygok in Turkey or something. Yeah. Mm. They need that for the Middle uh, Middle Eastern uh, operations. Yeah, and of course, uh, many Germans are not very happy about uh, having such important uh, air bases in Germany because that makes uh, uh, Germany, a couple of cities in Germany, the number one and two targets for for uh, <laughs> missiles in case of a real international conflict. You know, with the uh, nuclear That's weapons. Right. The first thing you would Italy, do, take is like Wiesbaden and Rammstein, you know. So. Yes, Italy, by the way, have 113 uh, American bases. That's uh, 113. 113. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. and Norway, Norway can celebrate. Uh, we got the, the first American permanent base this year, isn't it? Right. We will uh, soon have uh, dozens if we don't. Uh, something doesn't happen soon. Mm. There will never be content, but just one. No. Yeah, that was another thing that the Americans wanted to, to use Sweden for. It was to, to use uh, Sweden against Russia. Uh, I think they called it a 
uh, solid or permanent, um, you know, hangar ship, you know. Yeah, I like uh, an uh, on-ground hangar ship for, for launching mm -hmm. missiles against uh, Russia. So, uh, uh, Palma and the Social Democrats were, again, of course, against using the whole coast of Sweden as some kind of missile launching <laughs> point because you know from the no, Swedish per cannot. from the uh, Swedish perspective uh, it's not really uh, uh, an ideal situation to be target number one for nuclear missile missiles coming in right so <clears throat> no they can launch it from Estonia and uh, far further the east of course they don't really need Sweden not today, no, no, but like back in the uh, 80s and 90s, this was like a you know, different, yes. different map. Yeah. But they had a massive uh, exercise, military exercise, earlier this year, anyway. In yeah. Sweden, so. I think I have a, I have a, a friend uh, down in uh, eastern Norway. Uh, who has been, she's a widow now, but uh, she's been looking into um, the, uh, you know, emissions, of, you know, carbon emissions from the world military. It's like, the, it's absolutely clear number one emitter in the world is like the US imperial uh, war machine. You know? Which is not never a, uh, never an issue in the climate negotiations, you know. They they can just do what they want. Uh, they are kept out of any agreement. You know. One hangar ship uh, is just like uh, all other countries on Earth. Is that right? Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, spills and such. Spills. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, release of CO2 and everything. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I, I can't recall how many tanker ships they have, but they have uh, at least 10. Yeah, yeah. But I think today uh, I read yeah. that uh, the, the, the White House. Carriers. Yeah. Well, them aircraft carriers. Yeah, that's right. I think today it was, um, there was a news item about. Um, um, Climate change is, is finally removed from from the list of national security threats in America. So I think it seems the problem is solved. And that's a kind of a yes. happy happy news item that we can bring in this uh, sixty minutes uh, broadcast. <laughs> uh, Donald uh, solved climate change with the stroke of the pen. <laughs> that's excellent. A young luck. Yeah. So. Yeah, so if, if that's uh, correct, you know, if climate change is a solved issue, maybe this is the last uh, Clueless FM 60 Minutes broadcast ever. What do you think? Yeah, it is really a certifiable insight. I think I'm more and more convinced about it. Mm. But there is a lot of competition, though. We could... Uh, and, uh, those the rest of uh, the American Senate and Congress is uh, almost as crazy as he is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing that we haven't had a nuclear war. Uh, yeah, but you could say that, but you know, on the other side, it's like, why would you go to nuclear war against a nation that you can uh, cooperate about the oil and gas together with, you know, it's like, the only thing Exxon, Exxon wanted to do for the past decade was to cooperate with the Russians about the Arctic Sea, uh, oil and gas, you know, so it's like, um, you know, why bomb your partner in the big oil industry, right? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, if they are uh, um, rational, but uh, they are not necessarily rational. No. Right? So if they had been rational, it wouldn't have been so crazy. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's it's an in, interesting di dilemma, you know, because if, if they're, as you say, if they're really crazy, 
they just go and, and, and sling some nuclear bombs at each other. And uh, if they are so-called not crazy, they will go uh, all in into the Arctic Ocean to pump oil and gas, which is also crazy, right? So it's like yes, a, but uh, they are, they are, but you, we have seen it that the attacks, the verbal attacks on Russia, have picked up dramatically. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's obvious that they are uh, planning, that they, that they are planning stuff. Yeah, but they've been planning stuff since uh, since day one. You know, that's sort of the job of the military is to plan for every kind of contingency, you know, every kind of uh, scenario. Oh yes, but uh, the 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 attacks on the Soviet Union was were, was never were never so bad as today as uh, this to, at Russia on Russia today. Really, mm. it's far more. Uh, you should think, uh, based on that, that Russia is far more dangerous than Soviet, the Soviet Union ever was. You know, I I, um, I refuse to do military service, but uh, I think I've learned like since since that decision, you know, in the early nineties, uh, I learned that you know peace, peacetime or peace or business as usual is actually. You know, equally crazy, equally insane uh, as as war. You know, war is, uh, you know, war is like visually more extreme and, and more bombs and explosions going off and, and killing people like immediately. But the business as usual, uh, peaceful, so-called peaceful human activity <laughs> that Homo saps are doing every day. That's well, really, you know, really yeah, extreme yeah, because yeah. it's it's like uh, they're not uh, they're not uh, leaving anything, any living thing on Earth is not is uh, is uh, is not uh, left in peace uh, by by the so-called peaceful business as usual everyday life that we're doing. Like driving your kids to the fucking kindergarten is like destroying the planet. Right? But that uh, because uh, humanity declared war uh, on nature ten thousand years ago, yeah, and they haven't uh, let up since. So. With agriculture, but was I think it's fair to say that back then ten thousand years ago, there was no way for people back then to tell that this would would end up. Uh, oh no, they they couldn't they couldn't imagine. No. It's like people even today in, in America and Europe and Norway are denying the effects of carbon emissions, right? So <laughs> how on earth would yeah, they... And, and everything, everything else. Yeah. Uh, the uh, effect uh, on nature and destruction. Uh, us, uh, us as the sixth uh, extinction event and so on. Hmm. <laughs> I think I've seen... Um, Definitions. You know, there are different definitions of the Anthropocene and this and, and the sixth extinction event. Um, with some people starting that period with the killing off of the mammoths, you know, with the extinction of the mammoth uh, ten thousand years ago or five thousand years ago. So it's like uh, so. And the other side of the spectrum is people like saying that it started in the nineteen fifties or something. But yeah. I guess it's a civilization. Yeah. Ten thousand years. That's so good. And then there are other um, other uh, authors, other writers who claim that um, agriculture actually, you know, took off or or started uh, in earnest because we had killed off all the megafauna. We, we had killed off uh, oh, yes. all the big uh, uh, game. Uh, there were about um, five million people, uh, human beings, on Earth ten thousand years ago, mm. and that was uh, at least a million too much, too many. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, that's why uh, they, by default, started killing uh, the megafauna yeah. and uh, a lot of other stuff uh, too. But I think the point uh, of these uh, writers was that they had to start, uh, you know, growing the vegetables and growing the the grain and corn and stuff 
because they had uh, emptied the uh, the uh, megaphone or the, the the big game uh, in their areas. Yeah, it makes it makes sense that huh. they didn't have the uh, game to hunt anymore. Uh, yeah. At least not sufficient amounts. Yeah. Of. Uh, so so more and more people right. more and more people would go over into agriculture and but there would still of course be hunters and fishers around and uh, it's also interesting that in 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 the transition phase to agriculture uh, agricultural societies these uh, hunters and uh, you know mountain people forest people they would actually uh, you know storm <laughs> the uh, farmer villages uh, <laughs> every autumn and take all their harvest, right? <laughs> yes. And go around fishing and hunting the, the rest of the year, and just go down and, and pick the 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 harvest uh, from the farmers when when I was ready. So it's like, yeah, an interesting phase of uh, human history, I think. Yeah, but it's a progressive uh, um, progress. It's a progression, right? Mm. Uh, so, uh, uh, just like uh, global warming, mm. self, uh, self uh, progressive yeah. process. And the more uh, the more people, the, the more uh, the less uh, prey, yeah. and the more uh, agriculture, and even more people, and that's the insanity we have today. Yeah. So. The uh, humanity at the at the time grew too powerful, grew too skilled. Yeah. We just too clever for uh, this planet, I guess. Yes, they were too clever for themselves. Uh, it's uh, slow suicide. Yeah. Really. Collective suicide. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit like you know um, the early uh, the early um, people who tried to 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 make humans fly, you know, to, to develop aircraft and and uh, you know hang gliders or whatever. Uh, <laughs> lots of the the early attempts at human flight ended actually with with death at the bottom of the cliff. You know, people jumping off the cliff with some kind of flying equipment that was supposed to fly so I have um, some um, years ago I've, I've compared agriculture and civilization as a, some kind of bad idea I compared it to have to having some kind of uh, plastic wings or something and jumping off a cliff and because it's not sustainable you know they won't keep you up in the air uh, for very long so the difference between having some kind of stupid uh, children toy wings and jumping off the cliff and, and starting with agriculture is that it takes 10,000 years before you hit the damn ground, you know, and <laughs> and die. So, uh, so, uh, unavoidable uh, process. Yeah, it's a, it's a clear consequence of, uh, you know, uh, burning the forest and cleaning the the vegetation in order to, to grow some kind of uh, um, grains. Um, so the consequence of, of uh, you know, lording it to, to all of nature and to, to, to take over a whole landscape just for human purposes is that we wipe out ourselves and most of the larger species, species of uh, plant and uh, animals but it takes a long uh, it takes uh, a long time uh, but uh, we are getting there now yeah mm -hmm. clearly do you have any concept of the time uh, do you have any concept of the time we've been uh, going now because i i forgot to start my clock you know let's see <laughs> <laughs> Mm, yeah, we have uh, done, we have an hour, no, six minutes. Is it? So we have to round off. Yes. So maybe you, maybe you want to um, to take like two or three minutes to give your message to to the uh, Twitter and YouTube 
planet. No, it's uh, you need to be truly human again. That's simple, really. Uh, not the way we have pretended to be the last 10,000 years. We need to be like we were, uh, more or less 10, 15,000 years ago. And we need to be far, uh, we need to be far less of, uh, of us. As I said, if five million people uh, were too much, a million at least too much. Of course, uh, there are a lot, there are, mm, the earth as it is today can't sustain four million people either. Because uh, all the game is, uh, most of the game is gone. And it will take uh, many thousands of years before it uh, uh, recovers. It will take millions of years before, uh, before uh, life on Earth in general recovers. Mm. So, uh, as I said there in my, uh, one of uh, my blog articles, to have uh, any sort of optimism on behalf of uh, humanity's uh, immediate future is just stupid. It's insane. Yeah. But it was an interesting experiment, right? For 10,000 years. Well, we know now. But I, will we remember? Will we remember forever? Of course, civilization found. Uh, uh, can't recover, right? All the minerals is gone from the soil, hmm. uh, and a lot of other stuff we used uh, as well is gone. Mm. So uh, the oil uh, in the top soil is gone. Uh, all the metals. So we need to use uh, rocks hmm. uh, of the oil. Yeah. This swords uh, uh, can last a couple of hundred years, uh, but they will uh, go away. Everything will go away sooner or later, and then we will have just rocks. Hmm. Of course, uh, building a building a stone house is the lasting, uh, is the most lasting alternative too. Yeah, the the, the, st the stone house is uh, built by Vikings on Greenland are still standing. You know, like half half the buildings are still standing this day. Yeah. So. They don't they just last a, a lifetime. They last uh, many a year lifetimes. Yeah. So it makes sense to build stone houses. Okay. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, the current, the wood, the houses just last uh, hardly the last ten years. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that in America, in Western America, with this fire, wildfire season this year. Yes, it's really uh, funny to see uh, all the rich people lose uh, their whole homes. Of course, they have money to build uh, uh, anywhere. So. Hmm. I think with that uh, we will uh, say um, uh, happy solstice, happy winter solstice, and uh, you and I will meet, and uh, we and the listeners will meet uh, back again in January, if it all goes well. Yep, the new year. The new the year. New year. <laughs> the year we conquer NATO. Okay. Yes. Take care, Amos. See you. Right.